hi welcome back in this video we'll add security to our spring boot application and we'll explore how the default security configuration works in spring boot application well in order to add security to our spring, spring boot application first go to the pom.xml file and let's add you know spring boot status security dependency let's go ahead and let's add a dependency here artifact id is spring boot status security and group id is org dot spring framework dot boot so this is the dependency that we need to add in order to you know provide a security to our spring boot application well this dependency basically you know internally download all the spring security related libraries so look at here it internally uses spring security web spring security config and EOP and other dependencies we need to add only spring boot starter dependency spring boot starter security dependency and this dependency will take care by adding all the spring uh, security related libraries and the compatible versions etc all right now once we add you know uh, dependency to our spring boot application next we need to enable a debug log to our spring security module so that we can able to understand the default configuration of spring security well just add logging dot level dot org dot spring framework dot security equals to dig up so this is the property we need to add in application dot properties file all right now what do we do we will run our spring boot application and let's quickly explore the default spring security configuration in our spring boot application go ahead and just run spring boot application so look at here as soon as we start our spring boot application then in a console log we can see the statement using generated security password followed by a random generated id all right so this id is nothing but a password a random generated password well the spring security by default provides a user with this random generated password and we can use this default user to authenticate uh, authenticate to our application and one more important point is by default spring security enables you know security to all the urls in our application and we need to whitelist the required urls in our application that we'll see in our upcoming videos just remember two finds by default spring security provides a user whose user id is user and password is this random generated password which is printed in a console and the second point is spring security by default you know uh, enables security for all the urls in our application okay now let's head over to the browser and let's try to access one of the rest api go to the chrome browser in a new tab just type localhost 8080 slash api slash post so just we are trying to retrieve all the posts by using this rest point url hit enter and look at here as soon as we try to access a rest api spring security will you know navigate to us to this screen so this is the default login page provided by spring security it's awesome right we have just added a dependency that is spring boot status security dependency and we are getting a lot of functionality like this is the out of the box login page provided by spring security and this is called a form based authentication well let's go ahead and let's enter a username as user and password we can simply you know grab it from the console just go ahead and copy this password and go to the browser again and enter password in a password field and hit sign in button and there we go we got a response of the rest api as soon as we logged in or sign in to the application then we can able to access rest apis so this is called a form based authentication now we logged in using user and password from the random generated password in a console so we can also standardize the username and password by using some of the spring security provided uh, properties so let's go ahead and let's add few properties to standardize the username 
and password and role let's go to application.properties file and here just provide the properties to configure standard username and password so look at here spring.security.user.name so this is the property that we can use to specify the user so i'm going to just call it as ramesh and we have another property spring.security.users.password we can specify password here and we can specify role as well let's say admin all right so instead of using the default provided user and password we can also provide our own standard user and password by using these fields well let's go ahead and let's rerun our spring boot application and let's try to log in using these credentials go ahead and run spring boot application so notice that in a console the random password is not printed so as soon as we provide a standard username and password by using these properties then the random password is not generated in a console all right now let's go ahead and let's use this username and password to authenticate our application now let's go and let's just refresh and this will navigate to the login page again and just enter username as ramesh and password as password and hit sign in button and there we go we have successfully logged in to our application and we can able to access the rest endpoints all right we have just entered username as ramesh and password as a password so this is how we can you know provide our own standard username and password instead of using spring security provided user and password all right in next video we'll see how we can use basic authentication to authenticate or to secure rest point urls all right i will see you in the next video